Oh, and we're live. What's happening, beautiful people? Happy Monday, everyone. Good morning, America. Good afternoon, Europe. And welcome, everyone, to our live stream. And happy President's Day. How is everyone doing this afternoon, guys? Let me know how you're doing in the comments box below. And please remember to absolutely smash that like, share, subscribe button, which you're going to find in just a second. It helps us a lot in delivering more great content. Now, let's see. Let's see what is happening with the markets, guys. Let's get down to business and see what's happening in the markets today, 15th of February, 2021. Today, the U.S. markets will remain closed due to the President's Day holiday, and the U.S. stock markets show signs of strength once, once again. Former U.S. President Donald Trump was acquitted on Saturday regarding the accusation of instigation to violence on Capitol Hill. Many financial markets in Asia remained closed today for the Lunar New Year uh, holiday, keeping the trading volume low on the market. Crude oil prices broke the $60 mark. To the upside, there's a blast of Arctic weather in the U.S. sustained demand. And Bitcoin, everyone's favorite, tops $48,000 once again on news that Canada approved its first Bitcoin ETF, that Morgan Stanley is considering a first investment in the digital asset, and that MasterCard will probably start supporting crypto payments at a later stage this year. U.S. markets open, coming up. Right, and we're back, uh, beautiful people, with the economic calendar for the week, guys. We're going to have a very quiet day today in the economic calendar. Let's have a quick look and uh, and see what are the um, what is the data announced today in the economic calendar, what are the holidays in the economic calendar, and obviously the top five things to know in the markets today. It might help you tomorrow. So first of all, we're going to start with uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, countries uh, that uh, have a holiday today. No wonder the volume on the markets was so low. Uh, today, we have the uh, United States uh, celebrating President's Day. We have the uh, New Year's Day in uh, Hong Kong. We have Family Day in Canada. In China, we have the Spring Festival. And in Brazil, guys, we have the start of the Rio Carnival. Now, let's see. Let's see what happened uh, today. What announcements we had. Uh, as you see in the economic calendar, quite poor uh, economic calendar today. The only announcements that came out uh, were in the eurozone at uh, lunchtime today gmt plus two where we had the industrial production coming out worse than what economists have predicted negative 1.6 percent versus um, an expectation of negative one percent we had the trade balance again in the eurozone for december which was higher than what economists have predicted and then we had the housing starts and the manufacturing sales on the canadian dollar this is what the economic calendar has to bring today not a lot not a lot quick look at the economic calendar for tomorrow guys again we're gonna have uh, the spring festival holiday in china so the asian markets or most uh, asian markets will probably remain closed tomorrow and the carnival in uh, in brazil the rio carnival will probably last for three four days so don't expect uh, much from uh, from uh, from china and brazil in the next couple of days guys now, tomorrow, we're going to have a couple of announcements um, at lunchtime uh, from Germany in the Eurozone, followed by the gross domestic product for the fourth quarter in the in the Eurozone, as well uh, as the uh, ZW economic sentiment, which usually weights heavily on, um, on the direction of the European currency. Now, we're going to have housing starts uh, announced at 3.15 GMT plus two, uh, just about one hour ahead of the U.S. markets open tomorrow. And we're going to have the uh, New York Empire State Manufacturing Index uh, on the U.S. dollar. In the same time, uh, we're going to have foreign securities purchases and FOMC member Daly holding a press conference at 2200 hours GMT plus two. This is it. Still, the economic calendar for the week, guys. It's um, It's quite poor. Now, this is what is happening. Not a lot. So what uh, what is left to do, guys? Let's do a bit of technical analysis. Have a look at the charts and see how the assets are performing, how the assets are reacting to these uh, these holidays. Now, I'm going to start with top five things to know in the markets today, guys. And then we're going to take a 30 second break and have a look at the charts of the day. And why not the signals of the day? Let's see what investing.com uh, thinks about the markets today. So number one on the board, guys, Bitcoin tests $50,000 once again as dollar slides. Bitcoin prices neared $50,000 over the weekend after two new developments um, affirming the narrative that the cryptocurrency is going mainstream. 
Canada approved its first uh, exchange-traded fund for Bitcoin, further expanding its uh, accessibility to retail investors, while Bloomberg reported that uh, Counterpoint Global, a unit of Morgan Stanley Investment Management, is also considering a first investment in the asset class. The news comes uh, less than a week after Tesla said it had uh, transferred $1.5 billion of treasury reserves into Bitcoin as a risk diversification measure. That's all uh, part of a trend uh, of bets on a uh, chippering dollar due to loose U.S. monetary and fiscal policy. The dollar index tested a three-week three low today in Europe, while the yield on a 10-year treasury note rose 1.21%, its highest in over a year. So this is what's happening with uh, with Bitcoin, guys. It's still speculation at uh, at this time. So let's uh, let's take a bit of um, a bit of time to see how the markets will actually react to all this news. Number two on the board, guys. Australia squeeze on Facebook and Google, a landmark law that would force social media giants to pay publishers for the news they uh, carry. Came a step closer to reality over the weekend. Australian Treasurer Josh Frydenberg told ABC that. Um, the country was very close to some very significant commercial deals after holding talks with Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg and Google's uh, Sundar Pichai over the weekend. The law is being eagerly watched by media establishments and governments around the world. Google had threatened to shut down its search engine in Australia if it was uh, passed. It's unclear whether the weekend talks had led to any significant uh, watering down. Right. Okay. I'm uh, I'm surprised that uh, Google takes this um, uh, this action, and I'm not surprised whatsoever that um, Australia and more and more countries are trying to push Facebook and um, and Google to either pay some tax or work with the uh, with the global uh, with the uh, with the local regulators a bit more. Let's see what's uh, what's on the board for number three today, guys. Stocks drift higher after Donald Trump's acquittal, which is very, very, very important. U.S. stock futures drifted higher overnight uh, on Monday, with cash markets set to stay closed until Tuesday due to President's Day holiday. The acquittal of former President Donald Trump on Saturday has taken a reflecting desire by President Joe Biden to prioritize pushing through his spending plans rather than seeking political revenge on his former opponent. As such, it hints that uh, the 1.9 trillion package getting through Congress faster and without dilution. Overseas, we saw Chinese markets uh, remaining closed for the New Year holiday, while Japan's reopened sharply higher after a stronger than expected fourth quarter gross domestic product report. In uh, Europe, guys, Italian stocks were um, the outperformer after the new prime minister, Mario Draghi, which is the former European Central Bank president, selected a number of party politicians, not just technocrats, for his new government of national unity. Analysts said that uh, should help um, keep should help him keep uh, discipline among the often uh, parties that have agreed to back him up. Number four on the board, guys, Nissan uh, rejects Apple. Apple's terms and conditions, basically, Nissan became the latest car maker to be linked to Apple's ambitions in the mobility sector. The Financial Times reported that Apple had approached the Japanese giant a few months ago with a view to partner on its secretive project for autonomous electric vehicles. However, it reported that talks had broken down over, um, uh, among other things, uh, branding. Apple reportedly wanted its name on the product. It said that Nissan was reluctant to be seen as the Foxconn of the auto industry. Nissan shares fell 2.8% on the news, while shares in the uh, automotive supplier Magna, which uh, has also been linked to Apple, rose 3.5%. Now, the last but not the least, guys, oil surges as storms force Texas blackouts. This is... Um, the fifth uh, most important news uh, today, a blast of Arctic weather across the U.S. sent oil prices to um, their highest in 13 months. In addition to driving a spike in demand for heating oil, the weather front has led to Texas power grid operated, operator Aircot having to impose rolling blackouts in a state that accounts for much of the country's oil and gas output. The incident is likely to spark fresh controversy over the rapid build-out of renewable energy sources output from uh, which has not been able to keep pace with demand. By 7 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, U.S. crude futures were up 2.1%, guys, uh, trading higher than $60 a barrel, while the Brent uh, futures were up 1.5% at 63.37 a barrel. 
Now, this being said, guys, I tell you what, let's take a 30 second break so I can catch my breath. And then we're going to look at the charts of the day and the signals of the day. What do you say? All right. We're coming back live in 30 seconds with the charts of the day. Stay tuned. Keep your finger on the market pulse with the news alerts tool. Stay up to date on the latest sentiment across all the major asset classes. Uncover bullish or bearish signals tied to specific assets that could be developing before major price moves. And track how news sentiment correlated with price in the past. Track the news volume on an asset, its fear index, and get a better feel for its underlying strength. All with News Alerts, your central hub for market information. That's higher trading from MarketX. Right in, we're back, beautiful people, with the charts of the day. We're looking at crude oil WTI features on the 60-minute chart, okay, which is currently trading at $60.27 a barrel, pulling back in the last hour or so uh, after a tremendous rally that it had today. RSI stochastic are pointing downwards, so I would not be surprised if we're going to see a retest of that 50 MA to the downside at 59.45, considering that the U.S. Uh, markets are shut down today. Moving on, moving on, we're looking at the Euro um, USD, guys, the most traded currency pair in the world, which today is trading at 121.26 with the RSI and stochastic somewhere in between. Okay, apparently pointing towards a potential correction that we might see. We might see a retest of that 200 MA to the downside at 120.99. Okay, we're 121 flat. Now, where will, uh, will Euro take it from here? The US dollar will give us a hint tomorrow, guys. Okay, so... Don't uh, don't panic if you don't see a lot of uh, trading volume today as uh, the markets are taking a breather. Yeah, as half of the world is celebrating something and they decided to keep the markets closed. On the other hand, we're looking at the pound, guys, the sterling, which is rallying against the US dollar at 139.02. Apparently uh, testing that uh, 20 MA to the downside a few minutes ago and not having uh, enough power to go below it. So expect the pound to potentially strengthen a bit this afternoon, guys, um, considering that the US dollar doesn't uh, have the power to defend itself okay, versus the European markets. 139.02 for the pound, sluggish, sluggish um, day, but the RSI and the stochastic are way, way up into the overbought levels and they might go even higher, if anything. Moving on, moving on, we're looking at the USD JPY pair that uh, is trying a correction guys 105.38 this afternoon with the RSI and the stochastic way way up in the uh, in the over uh, bought levels okay so many many traders will uh, will now get the stochastic tool out uh, sorry guys the the Fibonacci retracement what's wrong with me I have the stochastic at the bottom of the chart anyway they would take the the Fibonacci re retracement tool out and try and measure the retracement guys uh, finding a perfect uh, spot to position themselves on the market. Okay, this is why the, the Fibonacci tool is so helpful for many, many traders. If you want to learn how to use the Fibonacci tool and uh, what the Fibonacci tool represents, feel free to contact us and I'll do my best to help. Now, moving on, moving on, we're looking at the Aussie dollar, guys, just um, uh, that started pulling back um, minutes ago, 0.7772 this afternoon for the Aussie dollar with the RSI and the stochastic somewhere in the higher section of the RSI indicating a uh, an uptrend, a potential uptrend. Okay, and uh, we see the stochastic just pulling back slightly from the overbought levels. So I wouldn't be surprised if the European currencies, as well as the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar probably today will uh, will rally a bit uh, once again. Uh, on the um, on the weekend of uh, of the US dollar, USD CAD is tumbling, guys. Looking at the U USD CAD uh, again on a one hour chart, one twenty six fifty five for the USD CAD this afternoon with the RSI and the stochastic crawling into the overbought levels, oversold levels. What's wrong with me today, guys? Ah, I know what's wrong with me today. It was Valentine's Day. I'm still uh, holiday mode. So let's uh, let's recap. RSI stochastic in the oversold levels, pointing upwards. We might see a bit of a correction, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a pullback from the US dollar this afternoon. Right, there's no point looking at the S and P and the Dow Jones guys uh, as the markets are closed today, but we can see they remained um, closed in the green guys over the weekend, and the markets on Friday closed at a new high. Okay, another high pushing the US dollar a bit lower. Very, very curious how they will open tomorrow. 
Meanwhile, the US dollar index is struggling to recover, is struggling to, to come back up. We saw a retest of that 200 moving average. Uh, when was that? On the 12th, guys. Okay, three days ago on Friday, and since then we saw the US dollar, uh, we saw the US dollar dropping. 90.38 for the US dollar with the RSI and the stochastic, somewhere in between overbought and oversold levels, indicating uh, potential uh, selling power on the market for the US dollar index. Quick look at gold futures, guys, which are flirting uh, again with the um with the 1820, 1830 levels. 1819 this afternoon, $1,819. With the RSI and the stochastic almost flat in between uh, overbought and oversold levels. Let's see. Probably the markets opening tomorrow will give us a clear direction. If the US dollar keeps stumbling, guys, we might see um, uh, gold futures pushing a bit higher. Right. I see we have quite a few people watching us today. Hello. Happy Monday, everyone. Uh, right. Okay. What's happening? Brent oil futures on a 60 minute chart, guys. $63.12 with the RSI and stochastic pulling back a bit, giving back a bit of uh, a bit of gains after uh, a good rally today. Okay, we see a retest of that 20 MA. Don't be surprised if the price will push a bit lower, yeah, towards the 62.51 or somewhere in that region. Okay, it's just to fill in the gap that was left at the opening today. And now, guys, the Bitcoin, the good almighty Bitcoin, which is giving back some, some gains after a tremendous rally that kept everyone pinned on, uh, on cryptocurrencies last week and, uh, and two weeks ago as well. $47,831 this afternoon. Let's see. Apparently, not enough volume in the markets. We might see a retest of that 200 MA to the downside, although the markets showed us that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general do not react to um to any technical analysis lately everything seems to be driven by news and tweets okay and uh, investor sentiment so let's see let's see what's going to happen with bitcoin it's very very early to uh, to say anything about it but what i can say for a fact is bitcoin is currently trading at forty seven thousand eight hundred and twenty two dollars and ethereum guys ethereum which is uh the second bitcoin if uh if you want $1,799 for Ethereum after an amazing rally in the last 12 or 24 hours from what we see here. Look at the charts, guys. Look at this amazing, amazing rally that Ethereum had okay, in the last few hours. We saw a retest, a fake breakout to the downside of that 200 MA. And after that, we saw an amazing, amazing rally. Now, don't forget, they tend to move together, the Bitcoin and the Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies as well. So don't be surprised if you're going to see a bit of a pullback after this rally that lasted for two weeks, guys, two whole weeks. Remember, two weeks ago, Ethereum was trading somewhere around $500, $600 um, per coin. Today, it's trading at $1,800. Okay, so expect a bit of a pullback. This is not good what's happening. The rally is too fast, too much. What's happening with the retail traders when um, institutions come into play? This is the question. Now, quick look at some technical analysis provided by uh, by investing.com this afternoon, guys. A bit of mixed uh, signals. We see strong sell on the euro uh, <clears throat> on all four time frames apart from the daily. The pound uh, versus the US dollar remains with a strong buy indication for a daily chart and, a, and an hourly chart. We see the USD JPY strengthening a bit this afternoon. Uh, USD CHF um, is stuck with uh, with red with four red uh, position sell and strong sell indicated by investing.com the euro is supposed to uh, weaken heavily versus the pound guys with uh, strong sell indications on all four time frames and the usd cad as well is uh, is supposed to weaken um with four strong sell positions this is it a lot of mixed signals today guys a lot of holidays uh, around the world so not enough buying or selling power Meanwhile, quick look at gold uh, futures, guys. Gold futures uh, set uh, with uh, four sell and strong sell positions on all four time frames for today. We're looking at silver and copper, uh, indicating a bit of positivity, yeah, a bit of uh, strength on the markets. We're looking at crude oil, WTI, and Brent oil with strong sell indications on um, on a five minute and a fifteen minute chart. The daily remaining a, a strong buy still. Natural gas, green for natural gas, strong buy. Why is that, guys? You're going to notice this uh, if you're in the markets long enough. Many, many times when you have a very heavy winter in the US, 
the price of oil, the price of natural gas tends to go up. Why is that? Obviously, it's very cold and people use these products to heat up their homes. Yeah, so th there's going to be a lot of demand. There's going to be more demand for this, pushing the price a bit higher. Okay, so whenever you get a wave of Arctic cold in the U.S., Keep an eye on natural gas. Keep an eye on crude oil WTI. And you will see that most times the price tends to go up. Right, ladies, gentlemen, traders, beautiful people. Happy Monday once again. This was it from my side today. The markets are closed. I hope I gave you uh, an insight of what's happening in the markets. And join me tomorrow, same time, same place, for a new round of market talks. Until then, remember to trade responsibly and may all your trades be in the money.